Okay, the benefits of self-care and how to practice self-care in a pandemic. So I wanted to start off the presentation by really putting emphasis on how oftentimes self-care means doing the things that we necessarily don't wanna do. Um, this quote was something that was available uh, in the presentation software that I was building and I felt like it really um, just drove home the idea that self-care is oftentimes doing things that we might not necessarily want to do in the moment, but can really have a lot of benefits us in the future. Um, so, you know, the, the, the foundations of self-care typically are considered drinking a lot of water or drinking enough water, eating healthy food, and uh, engaging in social activities with friends or family. Um, I think in this pandemic that has been especially hard um you know you're not allowed to to join in groups of 10 or more so finding ways to engage with other people socially has been um, a really big obstacle and we will kind of cover that a little bit later on um another huge thing to touch on is there is a growing body of research that states that um our gut health and how, and how we eat has a lot to do with our mental health. I don't know the specifics. I am not a doctor, um, but I would really advise looking into that on your own um, and kind of considering that when you're eating. Um, I personally am not great at my eating habits, so I'm certainly not uh, a master at it, but um, considering what you eat is a huge, uh, huge piece of mental health, I think. Um, so another thing to really press upon, self-care is hard for everyone, whether you're, you have kids and it's hard to kind of prioritize yourself or, you know, you're in college and you have a lot of work to get done. Um, it can be really, really difficult to prioritize your self-care over other things that seem like they're more important and it seems like, you know, getting a full night's sleep or, or maybe drinking that second glass of water isn't, isn't as important as you know, putting in extra hours at work or um, whatever the case may be. So I think um, that's another piece to self-care that can be really difficult, especially in the modern world where everything is fast paced and, um, you know, 40 hour work weeks. Uh, we have a hard time, I think, um, really prioritizing the things that we need when um, maybe they, we don't even realize that they're things that we really need. Um, so you've probably heard of setting SMART goals um, and we'll go into that a little bit more here in a minute. Um, I wanted to just kind of put everything in a list so that it would be really easy to reference. Um, I'm not going to read these off. We'll kind of go over each one as the presentation goes on. Um, but these are kind of the like basics. So SMART goals. Um, many of you have probably already heard of this or, or used this before, but, um, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based goals. Um, you know, we use this so that um, we're not setting goals that are just way out of our reach, something we are never going to be able to actually do. And then we also, you know, we measure them so that we can tell if we're making progress, we can adjust if maybe our goal was too big or too small. Um, so, you know, actually making steps forward uh, using SMART goals is a, is a huge piece of that. Um, these are some examples of SMART goals. Um, something personally that I'm working on right now is drinking enough water every single day. Um, I, have a, I have a hard time with that. Um, and I also use an app called Dailyo on my phone where I track my moods and my, um, I set goals and you can kind of select if you um, have completed the goals or not. And I'll, I have some more information about that. Um, this is also a journal. Again, this is what I use personally. Um, I think in, you know, 2021 and in the, in the age of technology, we're so used to just integrating it into our daily lives. Um, but if, you know, getting on your phone is not something that you want to do, you can also just write down how you're feeling, what your goals are, um, and then kind of try to keep track of if you're meeting those goals. Um, I did link the information for Dailyo um, 
This is a, it's a journal, um, it's a way to track goals and it's a way to track your moods every day. Um, I found that really helpful. I think that sometimes we can um, wash the past with maybe a negative hue or a positive hue. Um, either way, and this gives you a way to, to kind of track, um, did I have a bad day or was it maybe just a bad moment where I was frustrated, but the rest of the day was okay. And I think having that perspective can really um, help you realize that, you know, maybe you had a lot more good days than you thought you did. Um, it, and that's been really beneficial for me. Um, another huge, huge piece is listening to your body and taking time to rest. I think that this has been really important given the pandemic that we just went through, um, given that there are health concerns around that. Um, this is also, I think, really important if maybe you are starting to exercise more or move your body more um, and maybe you get really excited about it, but um, you also need to take time to rest and give your, give your body time to heal. I know I have a really hard time with taking time to rest when I need it, um, so that's definitely been a goal that I've been working on personally. Um, daily affirmations. This is another big, big, big one. I think, um, you know, it's also related to self-love and, and um, you know, reinstilling kind of confidence and uh, self-esteem, um, which are de definitely parts of self-care. I, I think you should tailor your daily affirmations to, you know, whatever fits best for you. Um, even if it's, I deserve to drink the water that I need today. Um, I think things as simple as that can really change your whole day. I try to do daily affirmations in the morning um, and at night. Typically, I think the nighttime ones don't happen as often as they should. Um, and it can feel a little bit silly when you first start doing daily affirmations. You know, it really helps to say them out loud. Um, stand in the mirror, look at yourself and say them out loud, which I know can sound or feel really funny or silly. Um, but I think you'll notice the change almost immediately. Uh, it usually makes me kind of smile or chuckle, um, and it really helps my day start out kind of with a good, a, a good mood. Um, so this slide I call um, chasing your joy, chasing your bliss, do the things that really uh, bring you joy. I think especially in adult life, we get so caught up in all the things that we need to do or that we, the human beings that we're responsible for or even our pets, um, that we forget to kind of do the things that we really enjoy and want to do. Um, personally, I try to go hiking once a week or at least get out in nature and see something pretty. Um, I also have found that meditation every day can be uh, really life-changing. It can really kind of uh, center you and um, make you realize that maybe some of the things that you were anxious about or worried about were maybe not as big of a deal as you thought. Um, so hiking, meditation. My mom really likes gardening. I'm not as much of a reader as I was, but here in the library there are tons of books and reading is something that you enjoy. Um, so yeah, just following your bliss, doing whatever it is that you like to do. Um, and then I think another really, really important piece is um, having social connections, making friends, um, you know, family, people that you work with, um, just sharing, sharing your self-care journey with other people. This can also kind of help you learn what works and what doesn't. Um, and really can make the journey kind of a fun, friendly um, thing that you do with somebody else rather than it feeling like this list of tasks that you have to get done every day. Um, I have a few close friends that I kind of share uh, my week with, and then I also am really close with my parents, um, but this can be, you know, really anybody. And I think that a huge piece of this pandemic has been people feeling really alienated or alone because of the lack of social gathering, um, which, you know, is for safety reasons, but it still takes a toll on people's mental health. Um, and without having kind of, you know, the library just opened back up to the public, but for a long time, people haven't been able to come to the library um, and haven't been able to kind of uh, gather in these spaces that they're used to gathering in. 
Um, I have linked a uh, couple of different digital resources for people to kind of make new friends. Um, meetups is a great option for making friends that have similar interests to you. Um, if there's something that you are interested in, there is a meetup out there for it, um, whether it be gardening, um, clubs, book clubs, anime, uh, whatever you are interested in, there is a meetup out there for you. And I think especially in 2021, um, th this is another really great resource because a lot of meetups are now virtual. So, you know, Zoom is maybe not the, the way that we all want to live our life, but it is a really great resource for you to kind of connect and meet people. Um, Facebook groups is another really great example. I use Facebook groups um, from everything from um, like uh, books that I enjoy, TV shows that I enjoy. Um, if there's something that you like, there's a Facebook group out there for you. Uh, and this is a really great way to kind of meet people that like similar things to you. And we are back to the uh, basics. So again, this list is really just meant to kind of run down the, the basics. I don't want to read it out just because I think um, we kind of went over each one. Um, and these are all just like little, little stepping stones to self-care as a whole. Okay, I am going to stop recording and open up for any questions that anybody has or any discussion that you guys wanted to have.